everyone, welcome to Ukraine Today, we are in Warsaw to talk about energy security in Europe and recently signed gas agreements between Poland and Ukraine and another one between Poland and Lithuania. Ukraine Today is joined by Pavel Nirada, the expert on energy of Institute Sebeski in Warsaw. Mr. Nirada, thank you for coming. So Ukraine and Poland have finished a visibility study on the construction of the gas pipeline interconnected between two countries. So what does this project mean for Polish and Ukrainian energy security? What are the economic and strategic benefits of this? And finally, how could it help Ukraine to reduce and even refuse Russian gas interdependency? Uh, we are investing into infrastructure basically to allow the Polish gas market to, to, to become a, a truly open market or at least have a, some sort of uh, access to the, to the global uh, resources markets. Uh, and I think that's what's happening now. Um, this is a part of, of, if you like, of opening this part of Europe to, to the international uh, resources, um, uh, natural resources markets. Uh, and uh, I think this is a very important step that will allow both Poland and, uh, more importantly, Ukraine to actually start thinking about buying uh, gas supplies from whoever got the best, uh, best offer. Does it mean that natural gas could be cheaper for Ukraine? Well, if you look what's happening in the markets right now, it should be cheaper. Uh, and I think even without this, um, when you actually when you are dealing with the monopolist, you always pay a premium, yeah? you, because you have no bargaining power before versus the, the monopoly. When you open the market, even if you introduce another few players, they have to, they have to adjust. So one very good example for that is Lithuania, which is similar to Ukraine and, and Poland, also heavily dependent on imports of gas from Russia. Uh, they have opened this uh, very small floating LNG terminal and only just days after they have announced they, they started to open it, they have received an, an offer from, from Gazprom for new contracting on, on slightly decreased price. Yeah? So despite they have, they have even not started to import the gas from, from, from open market, the, the gas from voluntarily approach them and offer them discount. Yeah? So that, that's, that's a very real example that actually improving the infrastructure, the opening the gas markets uh, is transferring into better prices for, at the end of the day, um, regular citizens. Besides this agreement between Kyiv and Warsaw, Poland has signed another agreement with Lithuania on building Poland-Lithuania gas interconnection natural gas pipeline. Polish Prime Minister Ewa Kopacz and European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker claim that history is being made. Is this agreement really a breakthrough? In a way, it, it may be, actually, because... Um... As I mentioned before, until now there was the, the, the although it was over 25 years that the, the communist and, and the Russian grip, if you like, like collapsed in this part of Europe, uh, and uh, now for over 10 years, 11 years, we are within the European Union. The the, the landscape of natural gas supplies in the region remained unchanged. Yeah. So it's uh, only now when we are just about to open the LNG terminal on our coast and, um, and uh, this and the, the interconnectors between the, the countries like Poland and Lithuania, these are finally the first steps that are hopefully going to redesign the, the landscape of this part of Europe. I confident that this plan would be successful either as opening LNG terminal in Svinoushi in the northern Poland because there were a lot of expectation on opening such LNG terminal in Klaipeda in Lithuania, but now it's unprofitable. It's a very interesting issue. The, the problem with that is when you're actually dealing with the monopolist, as we are, uh, from the monopolist perspective, it's very easy to set up the price on whatever level they want to make any alternative products uneconomical for the time being. Yeah? Like if you, if you look on the, on the history of what was happening last year during the heat of the, of the, um, uh, of the conf uh, confrontation between Russia and, and Ukraine, one day there was over $500 um, uh, dollars per, 
uh, per 10,000 meters. The other day there was 250. Uh, and at the end of the day, you are paying something in, in between. So, you know, you are observing 50% or 100% changes in, uh, in pricing offered by the Russian side. Uh, and these changes were, were happening within, the, within a week of one another. Yeah? So they, the price that, they are, that, that is offered um, by a monopoly got nothing to do with the markets because no market change can actually justify going from 250 to 500 and to 250, 70 again within the 14 days. Yeah? It's, it's, it, 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 it's a evident proof of, uh, uh, of the fact that in the monopoly situation, there is no market. You, you, you can, you, it, it, and it's very difficult and also potentially quite dangerous to, uh, to judge any alternative solution vis-à-vis -vis the pricing you get. Because uh, it's very, from the monopoly defending its position, it's very easy to, to, to prove that your new ideas like the LNG terminals are completely out of the blue and they are completely un uneconomical and make no sense because the monopoly can offer you, I don't know, $10 per, per 10,000 square meters, why not, for five days and, uh, until you abandon your plans of, 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 uh, moving, of uh, introducing competitors to the market. Uh, but then also it's, it's actually equally easy to, to fall into the uh, other end of the equation, so basically so to justify any incredible spending on infrastructure saying it's very important from the, from the point of view of um, national security. I think you have to keep the balance and, um, and probably utilize what's, uh, what's best for you. In general, how close are we to displace Russian gas dominance in Europe? I think it's, uh, it's very dependent. I, um, the, the key word is the monopoly here. Yeah? Yeah? Because, uh, for instance, Poland is also... I, if, if you look on the last five or seven years' history in, in, in Poland, you keep uh, every now and then there is a big problem with supplies of gas from Russia. Yeah? Uh, ten years ago it was the, on the back of, of the issues in, in Belarus, and then since 2009, every two years there is a problem because there is some, um, uh, some discussions, disputes on the Ukrainian uh, Russian front, if you like, uh, and uh, every now and then there is a big problem in Poland about the gas that's coming from, from Russia. Uh, on top of that, we are actually paying quite a lot. We are paying much more than the, the Germans are paying, and it's, 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 uh, it's only because we actually have to buy the Russian gas. Um, so, <clears throat> so the situation is what it is. What not many people are aware of, Poland is buying almost 90% of the crude uh, oil from Russia as, as well. Was there any problem with that? There was never a single problem with deliveries of Russian crude to Poland. Why? Is it because the Russians love us so much? Probably not, but the, the reality is that we are, we have the infrastructure in place that would actually allow to import all Polish crude oil needs from whoever we want in, in the world, because we have oil terminal, we have the pipelines in place. So if Russians will say, no, we will not sell, uh, sell you the, our crude, or we want 2,000 gazillions dollars per, per one, one barrel, we will say, fine, okay, so don't. We are not going to buy your, your crude, we are going to buy it from the open market, from, from, from Saudi Arabia, from whoever is going to, uh, to deliver it. Would that be convenient for us? No. Would it be preferred scenario? No. But we can do that if, if the situation would require. So that's, it's, it's a perfect example about, uh, um, about the real business relationship. And I think uh, once anyone in this uh, part of the world will be in position to build the, um, uh, to build the position that will be actually a real partner in discussing the, the natural resources supplies with the Russians, Russians can be very good trade business partners because the, the entire economy is almost based on, on selling natural resources to the third parties. Mr. Nurada, thank you for finding time to talk to us. I'm Margarita Sitnik together with Pavel Nurada, expert on energy of the Institute Sebeski in Warsaw.